Hello everyone and welcome to lesson seven of Caregiver University. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about positioning and assistance during mealtime. Caregiver assistance and participation in mealtime is important because it can increase safety, improve social interaction and participation, and reduce the risk of malnutrition. If a consumer needs caregiver assistance during mealtime, it may be due to trouble that they're having physically, cognitively, or with their positioning. If a consumer is having trouble with their motor skills, they might have trouble opening containers, holding utensils, cutting food, bringing food from the plate to their mouth, or chewing and swallowing. If a consumer is having difficulties with the cognitive aspect of mealtime, they may have limited concentration, a lack of motivation to continue or complete the meal, confusion, or they may be distracted by their environment or others around them. Finally, if a consumer is having difficulty with their positioning during mealtime, this may be seen as poor posture, tremors, paralysis, fatigue, or limited mobility. Proper positioning can reduce the risk of choking or aspiration while a consumer is eating. When assisting a consumer during mealtime, it is important to make sure that they are positioned following these guidelines. They must sit upright and be centered in the chair and should avoid leaning if possible. Their back and hips should be all the way up against the back of the chair. Their head and neck should be upright and their chin should be tucked down slightly. This helps prevent food from going into the airway. Their arms should be supported on the armrest, tray, or table. And their feet should be flat on the floor or their footrests. There may be some consumers that it's more difficult to follow these guidelines for positioning, but it's important to get as close to these guidelines as possible. Another way that a caregiver can help during mealtime is with their setup of the meal. However, it's important to always ask the consumer if they want or need help with these tasks before you just start assisting. We want to keep the consumers as independent as possible, so allowing to do as much as they can is always encouraged. So one way that you can help with setup is to move any unnecessary items from the eating area. This can be done to help reduce distraction and have the consumer focus more on the task of eating the meal. Next, you may provide adapted utensils or straws. These may be things like a spoon with a cuff or a weighted spoon or fork. And these can be used by consumers who are able to feed themselves but may just need that special equipment. It's important that you know or find out if they have any restrictions that relate to mealtime. For example, some consumers may not be able to use straws due to a restriction, which brings me to the next point. Always knowing which type of food consistency the consumer you're working with is allowed to have. There may be certain restrictions to the type of liquid they have, such as them needing it thickened 
or to their food consistency by kneading it ground, chopped, or pureed. You can also cut the consumer's food into small pieces. This may be done because they're not able to chew or manage bigger pieces or because they have weaker muscles and have difficulty actually cutting the food. A consumer may need help with something like opening a container if they have weaker muscles in their hands or issues with coordination. And finally, you may help by arranging and positioning items within their reach. This can help with consumers that may have limitations in the way that they can be positioned or with those who become distracted by too much on their tray and you can arrange it to help keep them focused. Again, there are many ways and types of assistance that you can give to a consumer during mealtime. However, it's always important to remember, like I said before, to allow the consumer to participate as much as possible. Always encourage them to try before just doing everything for them. This will help them keep the skills that they do have and work to improve skills that they may be having trouble with. So one way you might help is with verbal prompts or encouragement. This could be for consumers that have vision difficulties. You may need to help give them verbal direction to where the item is on the plate or where the utensil is. Or you may also be giving encouragement to consumers to help them continue throughout the meal and complete the task without quitting. You also might need to help by placing food on the utensil. Some consumers may have trouble actually scooping the food and getting the food on the utensil, but once they have it on the spoon or fork, they can bring it to their mouths and feed themselves. This is a good example of letting the consumer be as independent as possible because you're only completing part of the task and letting them do what they're capable of. You also might be helping by guiding their arm or utensil from their plate to their mouth. So maybe the consumer is a little weak in their arm or hand and they can bring the utensil and feed themselves if you give them a little assistance. This is still encouraging them to be independent and realizing they can, that they can still help in some way. But there still might be times where some consumers need full assistance during mealtime. And this is when you would be completing all parts of the task for them. So how to assist during feeding. These are some tips that I have on how to be successful when assisting a consumer. It's important to remember that you are helping someone do a task that may be embarrassing or feel like you're taking away their power by doing it for them. So it's important to let them be in control as much as you can. So first, I recommend sitting in front of the consumer, but slightly off to the side, so that you can encourage them to make eye contact and interact with them socially during the meal. If you're directly beside them or behind them, they can't see you and you can't see them. And this is also important for if you're watching them to make sure that they're chewing and swallowing each bite or having any issues eating, because you, if you're behind or beside them, you'll have more trouble seeing their face. Next, like I've said multiple times now, you always want to encourage their participation and independence whenever you can. You should also choose a pace for feeding that is safe and comfortable for the consumer. Make sure that when you're giving them a bite of food, they're chewing and swallowing what you've given them before you move on to the next bite. Which is why it's also important to provide an appropriate amount of food for each bite. Think about how much food you would eat on your spoon or fork and try to give that much to them. If they're having trouble, try making the bite smaller.
You also need to watch and listen for verbal and nonverbal requests to continue or stop feeding. This ties back into why I said it's important to sit in front of the consumer because from this position, it's easier for you to see their nonverbal requests such as the faces they're making or if they're having any trouble chewing and swallowing the food. This also allows you to talk to the consumer throughout the meal and you can have a conversation about how they're doing and if they would like anything to be changed. Finally, it's very important to know the signs of choking. I want everyone to know that if a consumer has any of these symptoms, you should stop feeding immediately and seek nursing or emergency care. So the signs of choking are excessive coughing, gagging or gasping for air, grabbing at the throat, or turning blue. Again, if you even suspect any of these signs to be happening, it's better to stop and get help than to continue and cause an accident. This is the end of lesson seven. Please continue on to the next slide and complete the quiz questions.